Are you ready? Yeah. You can do the trumpet. I don't know how to do it. How does it go? <laughs> go, go, you gotta do it. How does it go? Go, 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 go. Bye. You gotta do go? the trumpet. <laughs> you gotta make a new trumpet. Hey guys, welcome to Grab a Crate. I'm Ace and this is... I'm Bree and joining us is Lewis. How are you going, Lewis? I'm good, thanks for having me, guys. What did you do today? I went to the gym and now I'm here, having the time of my life. Alright, let's, nice, talk, nice. let's talk about... Um, now, I know you've got a YouTube channel. Yeah, Let's talk a little yeah. bit about that. Why did you start it? Why did I start YouTube? Um, I think it was a lot of it when I finished school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. and. Like YouTube was a huge part of entertainment. Any kid knows that. They sit hours on YouTube, you can lose six, seven hours easily. And I was like, hey, why not? So I guess that's why I started it. Um, I wouldn't say I have any real, like, I didn't really have any direction of what I wanted to do. I just knew that I wanted to be on the platform doing something. Cool. Um, so obviously, you know, like creating content can be a little bit difficult. So how do you go about that? Yeah, 100%. It's, I think, because there's so much out there now, it's so easy to be cool like a copycat no matter what you do. Um, and because of that, that can stop people from doing it themselves. Uh, so like for me, I was always somewhat okay with using a camera. And so as soon as I put something out there, first thing people say is, oh, it's like Casey Neistat, or it's the same as like Peter McKinnon and stuff like that. And straight away, it's very much like you fall into a pigeonhole of what you do. And especially like starting out, if you don't have millions of subscribers, the first thing people go is, oh, well, you're copying someone else, I'm just going to go watch them. Like, yeah. why would you watch a budget version of something when it's free and you can go do it, you know? So, like, it was it was difficult to try and find your own lane. And it's something that, like, I think I'm still struggling to somewhat do now. But it's about, like, taking little bits from the people you like the most and putting it together, still being yourself, I think. Yeah, so, obviously, like, I've watched a few of your videos and in one of your videos you kind of touched a little bit on about confidence and talking in front of a camera, especially being out in public. How do you go about that? Yeah, I mean, I think in Perth as well, you get a lot of weird looks. No one, I mean, you don't see vloggers and people walking around with cameras all the time. If you went to the, I don't know, the States, something like that, maybe it's a bit different. But especially in Perth, like, I don't know, I can't name any off the top of my head, people that actually do YouTube that go, well, I know who he is. Yeah, he, yeah. There's no David Dobrik's in WA. There's no Casey Neistat's in, in, in WA. So, yeah, absolutely. If you walk around with a big, I had a big, um, the Rode microphones, you know, 300 dollars they're huge, sit on top of your camera. People see, the, see them, they're like, well, what's that? Yeah. But if you just walk around with a DSLR without anything, people won't ask questions and they won't even probably look at you, which I thought was like really weird. Um, but yeah, it's definitely really difficult. And there's been heaps of times where I've tried to say something and you know, you just be like a woman that walks past that just gives you like the weirdest evils ever and you're like, uh, I'm just gonna put it down. But it's about yeah. like almost not caring what they think and just knowing, well, I, I know what I'm doing and this is gonna be sick, that's why I'm gonna do it. Do you think that that opens up the lane for content creators in Perth since it's not as popular as it is in the States? Oh yeah, 100%. But it's also about finding things that are, that are you know, people want to see. I mean, does, it's, about, it's about finding something that's really unique and really cool and trying to somewhat use Perth. I mean, like if you look at, for example, I know Casey Neistat, but he lives in New York City. What have you got? You've got like one of the best cities in the world, heaps of population, awesome things to do. When you think of Perth, what have we got? We have like a cactus in the middle of Perth, you yeah. know, something like that. Like, what's that, you know? So it's about necessarily the content of what you're actually saying or how you're making a story out of it, not just sort of using the environment, I guess. So when you say that, are you referring to instead of kind of going to all, like, the popular attractions, you're kind of wanting to create content, content from behind the scenes, rather? So you're focusing on what you see through the camera as opposed to, like, et going through the editing process? Yeah, I mean, s the story is the most important thing of anything, and you can have you can have a forty thousand dollar camera or a you know a thousand dollar phone, and if the story's good on the iPhone and it's bad on the forty thousand dollar red camera, although it might look nice, people don't want to watch it for you know more than a minute. If 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 the story and something's really engaging and the character that they have behind the camera is awesome, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You're going to get people to follow it and to watch it. If it looks nice, that's that's second, that, that shouldn't even matter. So what, um, what difficulties do you go through with the whole vlogging phase? Like do you have like content problems? Do you have like problems with editing or like trying to pick up really good footage on like certain days, like weather, that sort of thing? Like oh, what, what problems do you have? 100%, I mean, living in Perth, it's always sunny. Um, anyone that 
knows anything about a camera knows that if it's bright and sunny outside, it's not the best time to shoot. You want overcast conditions and yeah. you want, uh, yeah, so absolutely that makes a difference. And I also think the heat makes a difference as well. Um, the amount of times I've been out when I had uh, my smaller cameras that just wouldn't work because of the heat, literally like during the middle of summer would be like, oh, I can't film today. And you're like, really? Um, but yeah, I mean, in saying that it doesn't rain, so you can be outside the whole time, which is nice, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, and even flying drones, if, like, I mean, I, I fly a few, uh, like two drones I have at the moment, if you fly in the, in the rain and stuff like that, or even when it's really windy, that makes a big difference. But in Perth, it's usually just the heat um, that I think makes it really difficult. And especially with um, living 25 minutes from the city anyway, if it's 40 degrees, you don't really have an idea, but you want to do something in the city, getting into the city, having the, the energy to actually shoot something that's going to look really nice and has a good storyline is, is definitely becomes more of a challenge and more difficult if it is, yeah, the weather's too hot or something like that. You mentioned drones. That's really popular on YouTube. I eat a lot of content on YouTube too and I see a lot of drone footage. Can you talk a bit about that and why it's so popular? I think um, it's, it's definitely a phase thing. Um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, drones are expensive, especially your DJI drones and stuff like that, and even your, your GoPro Karma drone. They are very expensive pieces of equipment. Um, at the time, I bought mine for $1,200, which is pretty steep. At like Just being 20 and being a student, I mean, that's not cheap at all. Um, and again, people react so differently and they're like, whoa, what is this? Like, you're flying a spaceship. And the amount of time, time to have people come up to me and be like, oh, like, What's that? And especially the older generation, they have no idea what's going on. <laughs> like they, they think, oh, the government are coming to kill us. <laughs> like they got no idea. Um, but also with regulations and where you can fly in Perth is actually pretty loose compared to, to the rest of the world. They're completely illegal in Sweden. Um, you can't fly them anywhere, almost in Canada now. Um, but WA are actually bringing in new rules soon about changing those things. So it does become more difficult of where you can actually fly your drones. You can't go anywhere near the city. You can't fly uh, like near people. You've got to be about sixty meters away from them. Um, if you get fine, if you get caught by the police, it can be like a thousand dollar fine and stuff like that. So right. it's expensive stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So you, obviously you've got that screen on the controller to yeah, yeah, you control, do like how high it is and how um, low it is and that sort of thing. Yeah, so they have a, a Wi-Fi connection from your phone to the controller. Um, it can get pretty frisky and scary because sometimes it can disconnect and you have no idea. So you're literally flying blind. Um, so you need a good phone in order to use it, otherwise it'll just crash and it'll stop working. So, um, yeah, you can still see where you're going, but I mean, it's, yeah, it disconnects constantly. And that's, that's a really expensive drone as well. So, I mean, if you were to buy a budget one, I mean, I think you'd almost have no chance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the post side of things. So, like, after you vlog, what process do you go through? So, you obviously, you upload the footage and you seep through it. Do you do cuts and stuff like that to pick out the most engaging content for the viewers? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so obviously you use your Premiere Pro or your Final Cut, whatever you're, whatever you're using. But it's, I think the most heartbreaking thing is when you make something that you think's like awesome and it took you a day to do, or it's like a really cool drone shot or something and it doesn't fit in your video. Having to like sort of have discipline and cut that out yourself and being like, it's awesome but it doesn't work is really difficult. And it's also, when you make something yourself, it's almost like it becomes your baby. So you might say a line or something, a joke even that you think is like really funny and you have a second pair of eyes that look at it and go, that's cringy or like you shouldn't do that, it makes no sense. And you go, no, 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 it's cool, it, do it does fit. Yeah, yeah. When you reflect on that later, like the amount of videos that I made that I look back on six months, I'm like, what am I doing? Like, why is that up there? At the time you think it's like, you know, the best thing since like sliced bread. Yeah. But it's about having the discipline and be able to see, no, nah, this isn't what I want it to be. And just about trying to yeah do what you can I guess with the footage because there's nothing worse than getting home from a day of shooting and you go yeah I didn't get everything I wanted you know so yeah, yeah. It's, it's really um, like especially discipline just to make sure that what you're putting in is something you're proud of and even if you have people that go this is crap or this this sucks you know or I'd rather go watch someone else you, you've got to have that self-belief that no nah, I'm good at this and no nah, this is cool you know what I mean so that, that's important I think so let, let's continue on with that um, with critical feedback, how do you go about that? Have you ever had people critically say something about what you do? Or like say like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, that's pretty weird? Yeah, 100%. Um, I mean, my channel, you know, I think I got kind of a kick in the face when I sort of made it and I was like, this is going to blow up. And, and it didn't. Um, and I was like, oh, well, no one will care. Um, and I had people who would literally come up to me. I had a few people that came up to me. I was in Rebel Sport buying clothing for Christmas. And there was this guy that came up to me as a kid. And I'd never seen him in my life. He goes, oh, hey, you're Lewis. And I was like, 
yeah, how do you know me? He goes, yeah, I watch your YouTube videos, man. Like, they're really cool. And I was like, whoa, like, he wanted to take a photo of me. Like, literally, I was like, what? Yeah, it's that, it's that exposure that yeah. gets you. And especially, like, in this industry, in WA, it's really hard to break into. So yeah. the moment you get that exposure, it's that kind of, that feel of accomplishment and achievement. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a really sur surreal experience. So I had that in the morning. And then the same day, literally, I got a message from a guy that I used to play football with. And he was like, bro, what are you doing? This is, like, laughable. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, dude, like, you shouldn't. Just stop doing it. And he was like, oh, you're making a fool of yourself. It's kind of like bad, man. Like, people are laughing at it. And I was like, oh, okay. And, like, not that I... I wouldn't say it affected me, but it definitely was something that would ponder in your mind. You'd be like, maybe I should just stop and be normal. Or, yeah, you know... Like, you having know, normal nine-to-five yeah, job. Yeah, and, yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, but then when you get the good, it outweighs the bad, absolutely, I'd say. So, yeah. So, did your influences of vlogging make you want to get into the film industry? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Uh, the idea of creating something and being really proud of it and having people go like, wow, like that's awesome. Or oh, I've never seen that before. That's That kick and that drive is, um, for me, yeah, absolutely what made me want to get into this industry. So now that you're slowly breaking into this industry, what, what role or what position are you wanting to get into? Do you want to be like a videographer? Do you want to get into editing, directing, that sort of thing? Yeah, cinematography is definitely the thing that I'm most interested in. Um, for me, that's where I get the most, I guess you say, pleasure, like out of um, having uh, a vision in your head and being able to create that. And then when you go to post and you edit it and you finish it, you're like, damn, this is exactly what I wanted it to be like. So, yeah. Cool. And are you wanting to stay in WA in terms of like future jobs and that sort of thing, like freelancing? Um, I mean, I think you'd be pretty uh, silly to think that you can get everything in Perth, to be honest. Um, obviously, there are jobs available here. But if you were to go, you know, travel to either the other side of Australia, Melbourne, Sydney, or you to go abroad, you know, out of the country, I think there's definitely, I mean, you've got higher population and you've got more exposure to these sort of things. You've probably got a bit more of a, um, I don't know, a way to chisel into that industry through there. Um, and I've talked about that with uh, friends and family about having, you know, if it goes well, what, do you move? I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's about being, I don't know, not afraid to do that, I think. if you, And I mean, you could stay in Perth if you wanted to, but I feel like, um, you'd have more of a chance if you were to move across. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. Um, so in terms of, like, let's go back to your what, vlogging and stuff like that. In terms of that, what are you going to continue? Are you going to kind of create different segments on your channel? What are you going to do? Are you going to keep it going or are you going to kind of put it aside for a little bit? Um, I mean, I've had quite, I think it's maybe been three months since I actually uploaded my last video. Um, absolutely, I want to get back into it. I mean... It's a, a thing where you can be in a zone when you start pumping out videos, you can be like, oh my God, yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna go film, this is gonna be sick. The day after I'm gonna do this. Once you have maybe a, a break and you're like, oh, I'm not gonna do it today. It's very easy to fall back into, nah, maybe not, nah, maybe not. But once you get into it and you start doing it, you'll know if you'll enjoy it or not. And when I'm out there shooting my stuff, I'm going, this is like, this is really fun. I, I, you know, I've got spare time, but this is what I wanna fill it with. And if that's how you feel, then keep doing it. There's no point, you know, stopping, especially if someone that you, that's close to you says, oh, don't do it. Uh, nah, it's not cool. That can really put you down, but as long as personally yourself, you're really enjoying it, keep doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a funny question, actually. How'd you learn uh, um, what you do? Um, I, I love hearing people's story, uh, stories about like self-learning and like how they develop their inspiration and influence, but maybe you can talk about to other people, if you didn't study, how would you learn this stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's a great tool called YouTube, um, and that's got videos and everything. I mean, yeah, it's an online learning platform. You can just look up anything, and it comes up with, with everything. That's how I learned to edit on Premiere Pro. Um, that's how I learned to use a camera, just trial and error as well, just trying things. But watching videos, yeah, is the most important thing. I mean, you can read things, and, you know, you can, oh, well, it says to do this. If you've got someone who can just show you that, and, and I'm quite a visual learner, I think, as well. If you've got someone who can show you how to do something, and they do it, and it's through a screen, they might live on the other side of the world, and they can still show you that and still give you the same information. That's really important, and that's, I think, helped me a lot to get where I am. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with the camera, and I can do things that you'd say, well, a lot of people would always pay, pay to have. Um, and I've had that as well, because I've done stuff for different companies and that, and you go, well, this is pretty basic stuff, and they're like, no, we can't do it, like, we'll give you a thousand bucks for it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, whoa, like, really? It seems pretty simple, but 
it's a really important skill that it seems to be at least quite widely spread and a lot of people need that sort of work done. Have you learned anything about audio? Um, all I know is that bad noise is like bad audio can absolutely destroy a, uh, you know, a, pr a product or something you're creating. Um, but I mean, no, not, not, to the, not to the extent that you guys would know it. No, oh, true. Not. Are, you wanting to, are you wanting to learn a little bit about how audio is incorporated uh, like into videos, especially like with vlogs and that sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It has a huge impact on tone, tone of the videos and you, know, you can put uh, your little side of like sound effects in and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, absolutely. The, the better you can make something, the, you, if you can create an experience for someone, if you can do that through sound, first of all, and then you add image on top of that, like absolutely that enhances the experience of the viewer by, you know, times 10. Has there been times where you've been like fiddling around with the camera and you just can't get it? Like there's something that you're trying to do, you just can't get it. Have you ever just wanted to give up? Like yeah, out of frustration? Absolutely. I mean, if you go and look at, you know, you've got people with tens of million subscribers or even major productions for movies and you see this type of shot, and you're like, wow, I want to recreate that. And you go, well, I've got somewhat of the same camera. Why can't I do it? Yeah, absolutely. That's almost, it's sort of story. You know, you feel like, oh, well, why, why can't I do that? But I think a lot of it is, again, don't worry about trying to do what someone's already done. Like maybe if, if it's a type of shot, it's a bit different because obviously you can, you, know, you can still do it. But worry about just trying to do something that's a little bit different or, or take things from it and go, okay, well, how's, why do I like that so much and what can I do to almost make it better? Mm. Yeah. All right. And... Uh do you have anything to say? Yeah, just moving forward. Last question, I promise. Moving forward with that, can you give us a sneak peek of any content or uh, some ideas in the future that maybe um, you would like to film? Yeah, well, if you follow my Instagram, All right. uh, which I'm sure we can put somewhere. Right here. <laughs> right there. Right here. Um, What's it called? It is Lewis underscore lowercase l underscore York. I believe I got that right. I think that's, yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. Um, yeah, the second last photo I put up was actually of my new set that I'm going to be using for my videos. Um, oh, cool. Upcoming, my nice little little studio type thing I've set up. Um, and obviously, yeah, I want to really get back out into the city and start, you know, doing some more creative stuff, I think. Um, especially, not so much vlogging of a day, because I find that can be quite boring, but trying to make an actual story out of something and, and using what I'm learning now uh, to add to those videos. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfect. All right, and on that note, I think we'll uh, leave it there. Thanks, Lewis. Sweet ass. Thanks for having Thank me, guys. Thank you so much. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, hi. I think it was a little bit off. That was a little bit off. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. That was